What's going on guys and welcome back. In this video we are going to be changing the battery in the W204 C300 and I wanted to show you guys how easy this is. It isn't really hard at all. However, you know, you hear horror stories about people doing this and then having issues later on like faulty electrics or something doesn't work, a blown fuse or other lights have somehow just stopped working or error messages, things like that. But I'm going to show you today that it is pretty safe to do. All you have to do is disconnect the battery using the negative terminal first. Remove one 13 millimeter bolt and you'll be able to loosen the battery from the battery tray. And then after that, it's just a matter of pushing all the cables out of the way, lifting it out, and then reinstalling your new battery and reconnecting your terminals. Let's jump straight into this and get the battery out of the car first. Right here, so first thing you need to do is remove this cover box, which is basically your filter for your air that passes through the car. Inside there is your blower motor. This is like your cabin air filter. You've got three clips, one, two, and three. The one on the right, you push to the right. The one in the middle, you raise up. Push it in a bit, then raise it up. It'll be easier to disconnect. And the one on the left, you just push to the left. It disconnects really easy. Pull back and then wiggle it out. That's it, really simple. Here, you've got your positive terminal and your negative terminal. There is a 13 millimeter bolt all the way inside here. And you need to remove that so that it releases the clamp that clamps the battery to the tray. So I'm gonna show you that now. There's our battery there. Let me show you what I'm talking about inside here. As you can see right there, you can see that 13 millimeter nut in there. And that is the little bracket that clamps the battery down so that it does not move. If you didn't have that clamp there, this would most likely move around a lot. And you definitely don't want that. So now we need a 13 mil socket and an extension, and we need to break that loose and take it out. Now you see the other thread there? That's to allow for a bigger battery if you need it because in this particular case my battery is a little bit longer than my standard battery lucky enough we do have a tray that allows for a bigger battery so don't be alarmed if your battery is a little bit longer than your standard one it will still fit and i'm going to show you that today here i have a 3.8 ratchet with an extension and a 13 millimeter whatever size you just get the right socket for it reach down inside get on top of it and break it loose all right, once it's broken loose, you can take off the ratchet and just get it out by hand. It's gonna loosen it all the way now by hand. Now I'm just gonna grab it. Here we are. And that's the nut out. I'm gonna leave it up here. Now I'm gonna loosen the bracket. And this is it here. So this part here is what clamps onto the side of the battery and that holds it down so it doesn't move. So we'll set that there as well. Now we need to loosen this 10 mil nut and this Allen key here so that I can loosen the terminals and take the battery out. So 10 mil. Loosen that. All right, so that's loose. All right, just a few turns and it's already loose. Now that it's loose, I'm just going to undo the negative terminal. Now I'm just going to use a towel or a cloth, something that will just help prevent it from touching anything else because I do have a positive terminal here and we don't want that. Here I've just got a towel and all I'm gonna do is disconnect it. If you're scared of getting like a little spark, don't worry. I'm just gonna pull it straight off now, work it off, there we are, and then I'm just gonna wrap the towel around it so it doesn't make any more connections with anything else. That's our negative terminal, disconnected. Now for our positive terminal, do the same thing here. I'm just gonna loosen it, wiggle side by side, and then pull it straight off. Wrap it like that, and we'll get it out of the way as well. That is your positive terminal, and you have a ground terminal here, so don't let the positive touch this unless all the power has been discharged from your battery, from your car, then it won't create a short. This is one of the main things I believe that's going to cause a short or some sort of electrical fault, is if you somehow touch the positive terminal while there's still power within the car chassis, and then you touch ground of the car's chassis with a positive terminal, it's definitely gonna create a spark. Even though you have things like overload protection and all that, it's most likely going to short a fuse somewhere or throw an error somewhere. If possible, you want to prevent any kind of short between the positive terminal and the car's chassis and even the negative terminal. Don't let them touch. Don't let the positive touch the chassis of the car because it's definitely going to create a spark. And if you have electrical faults after, you may have done that without even knowing. So just be very careful of that. So now that the battery is loose, all we have to do is pull the handles up like so, lift them both up. They normally fold it down like that. Lift these up so you have the handles to pull them out. And if you wanted to get a direct replacement, just look here. You're going to see your part number right there. This is the voltage, 70 amps, etc. 760. It's an AGM battery, so try to get another AGM battery. Get all the terminals out of the way and simply lift. Something's in the way, just lift it out of the way. And there we are. Battery straight out. 
the air hose for the battery is going to disconnect here right and that's fine not a big deal that's simply connected to this here this red little air tube right there if your new battery doesn't have it don't worry about it it's fine now let's grab our new battery and let's talk about it before we put it in right so here we have our new battery and this is the air tube that comes out of your battery this is the vada f18 Although this isn't directly from Mercedes or a direct OEM replacement, it is designed specifically for OEM batteries. And it's also a little bit more powerful than the one that we currently have. Now, when it came to making a decision on which battery to buy, I was either going to go with an original from Mercedes or an aftermarket that was designed specifically for my car. Now, as you can see here, this has 42 months warranty. You can see it on the sticker right here. It says that. So having 42 months warranty is also a key factor. Not only that, but this is also an AGM battery, which is exactly the same as the one that's already in the car. Now there are two main types of batteries that you can get for your automotive needs. One is an AGM battery and the other is the lead acid battery. The AGM is a little bit better in terms that it's ideal for cars with lots of electrical equipment and especially diesels as well. Another good thing with these batteries, they are completely maintenance free, sealed and the biggest contributing factor to buying this battery was that it was made in Germany. Now, if you compare this battery to the one that's in the car, you can see that this is 800 in terms of cold cranking amps and its capacity of amp ear is 85. It is also a little bit bigger than the one that we currently have. It's just a little bit longer, but in terms of width and height, it's still exactly the same. Now, don't be alarmed, even though it's a little bit longer, because as I showed you earlier, there is an extra mounting hole where you are able to add a larger battery and i'm going to show you that right now right so i'm just going to bring the battery over now and just move the cables out of the way and then once the cables are out of the way i'm just going to plop the battery in and i'm just going to sit it down first now just in case i accidentally touch the cables as i'm trying to reinstall it i'm just going to cover the terminals this just makes it a bit safer and now i'm just going to move the battery around until it finally sits in place it may just take a little bit of moving around depending on how your cables are positioned but overall you will be able to get it in just make sure you push all the cables out of the way first right so here is the tube and you just push that on there really simple it sits all the way in like that and that's it all right so now you can see the battery is completely leveled it doesn't move now we need to get on our battery clamp once again right there so we'll put that in get the bolt in and uh hopefully it fits in just well but even if it doesn't it's pretty safe in there. As you can see, it doesn't really move around at all. So that's pretty good as well. You shouldn't have to worry if you can't get that battery clamp back in, but you should if you can. Let me just show you how the battery clamp's supposed to go back on. You see how you've got this side here that has a lip? That's supposed to sit on the battery like this. Then the bolt will go into a threaded hole that's there. And that's the way it sits in, just like that. It will probably take a little bit of uh, maneuvering, but just like I showed you earlier, there is a location where this can be fitted. Now it's probably going to sit closest to here because the battery is a lot longer now, but let's just see what happens when I get it in. Okay, so now I'm just gonna drop this in and I'm gonna move it around with my socket set. Perfect, all right, there we go. It actually lines up just right. So I've just dropped the bolt in there like that. Now I'm just gonna use the socket to line it up and start it off. Okay, so now I've just snugged it up. Now grab my ratchet, put it on and tighten it down. Just tighten it down nice and snug, don't go too tight. It's just to really hold the battery in place. Once you feel it tight, just that's enough. Battery doesn't even move. Now I'm gonna reconnect my positive terminal first, then I'll do my negative next. My positive terminal has the positive of my trickle charger, so I'm gonna put that back on as well. Grab my positive and connect it on. And get my 10 mil nut and screw it back on. Now, if you're afraid of sparks or anything like that, do it with the towel, put back the positive terminal, just like this. Now it's very important that the negative terminal doesn't touch anything positive now. Wrap it so we can't touch anything. I'm gonna get it on all the way down. Then I'm gonna tighten it with the 10 mil spanner. Now it's also very important right now that you do not accidentally touch the chassis of the car as well because that's going to cause a spark because you're touching positive and negative together. It would be weary of that. You can see you've got a ground bolt here. So do not accidentally touch it, you will cause sparks. We're gonna put on the negative terminal, put on my negative terminal for my trickle charge onto this, and I'm just gonna push it straight back on. So as you can see, there's a positive terminal on, nice and tight, you can't even get it off. Positive on the right, negative on the left. Here's a little like uh, protection cap, and just leave it there. 
ready to triple charge if ever I need to. And don't forget guys, if you ever jump your car, you use this positive terminal and this negative terminal. You don't have to use ground chassis of the car because this is already connected to the ground chassis. Simply reconnect the negative terminal now. I'm gonna use the towel in case you're scared of sparks. All right, there was a little spark there. I heard like a little bit of electricity, but that's nothing. Not a big deal at all. Just gonna tighten up the uh, terminals. I'm also going to reattach my ground terminal for the trickle charge. Get it on all the way. There we go, nice and tight. Let's get this positive terminal out of the way now. We don't want it anywhere near the negative terminal. Let's give the car a start and see if we have any sort of error messages. Let's put our cabin filter back on. Squiggle it in like this. There we are, just like that. Get it centered. Put our plans back on. Center one. And our one on the left. Just like that. And that's it. Let's give the car a start. Check this thing out. This is a hail cover for the car. And it's also heavy duty as well. It's basically just to help the car from any type of hail damage. So before I replaced the battery, I wasn't even able to unlock the car and lock the car. And now with the battery changed, everything works as it's supposed to. I'm gonna jump in the car now and uh, let's start her up. Perfect. And there you have it guys, no error messages whatsoever. Car starts just like it was brand new. And that's how you change out the battery for your W204 guys. It's a really simple procedure. So I hope it gives you the confidence to do a battery replacement yourself. Until next time guys, this is Mike with Mike's Vlogs, signing off. Bye for now guys.